an ideal early spring night, one would presume. This is part of Sherwood Forest and it's March the 19th and conditions, well, conditions tonight are going to be the best for a number of nights. We've got cooler temperatures coming apparently as we head towards the weekend. So it was a case of pop out here for a couple of hours or stay at home and watch the telly. So Sherwood Forest has won. But lots of insect activity this afternoon, really nice, pleasantly warm temperatures. Bumblebees everywhere in an early walk around this part of Sherwood Forest. So we'll see what we can catch in a couple of hours trapping. Well, the sky is darkening quickly now. It's just coming up to quarter to seven. So, generator has warmed up nicely. So, time to fire up the light. Well, that's the the setting, the location for tonight's session. Hopefully the temperature won't drop too quickly. It's not forecasted to drop that much, actually. It's, not, it's forecasted to be quite constant throughout as the cloud builds up. There's a frontal system coming in. But at the moment, you can see the moon, but the moon is very hazy, so... Obviously, some of the temperature which is built up today will sort of leach upwards, so to speak, into the atmosphere. We await the first moth. Well, the first two moths are already in. Not surprisingly, Chestnut was the first to arrive, closely followed by a male, Diurnia fagella. There will certainly be more Dionia figellas. It's a really common moth in March and first part of April. Commonly found during the day on the trunks of trees. But only the males fly. The females aren't quite wingless, but they do have wings which are large enough to cover the abdomen. However, that doesn't mean that they're large enough for the female to actually fly. Very attractive moth. And that sounds like mandarin duck to me. So, first two moths in, we'll see what else comes. Well, it's very quiet, just two rather worn chestnuts in, and this lone Dionia fagella at the moment, so. I thought, while it's quiet, I'll show you Diana Fagella. I'm not going to film everything, just anything of interest, but I will be putting photos in of some of the other species that come into light. This is just going to be a relatively short session. That's the plan anyway. But Diana Fagella, it's a moth, quite a distinctive shape. I suppose you could say the shape at rest here is somewhat reminiscent of March moth, but Diana Figella is smaller than March moth, and this is actually one of our micro moths. Great confusion to newcomers when this moth arrives at the light, and because of its size, it's presumed to be a macro moth, but it isn't. So, one to learn if you're new to moth trapping. And early in the year is the best time to start to learn and to start to trap moths. 
better start in, in February, March than at the peak time of June and July. So Diana Figella, one of just three moths in so far. Well, here's one for the chestnut fans amongst you, of which there's probably very few because this is a moth. It is fairly drab, I must admit, certainly by the time we get round to March, it's lost any of the attractive coloration or the more intense coloration that individuals have once they've just emerged in, in autumn. Obviously, throughout the winter months, these moths will fly on mild nights and often find them on the trunks of silver birch by torchlight. But by the time March comes around, they're pretty drab affairs, in all honesty. And as it's a common moth, it suffers by being so common. And many people neglect it. But two of these in, and very little else. Well, it's surprisingly very quiet. I did expect more of a flurry of moths coming in, but we're almost half an hour in and just the three moths, the two chestnuts and the Diana Figella, and they came in very quickly. But with moths like common quakers, small quakers, clouded drabs, and chestnuts and satellite, typical early spring moths, they will be feeding and pairing up at the onset of darkness as a Diana Figella does drop in. So we will see how it goes. There's quite a lot of goat sallow around where I am, which are probably full of moths. That's probably where they all are. They'll be up there rather than down here, but the moon is still visible. So I'm hoping that the temperature just doesn't drop too much. It shouldn't do, it should be absolutely fine, it certainly feels fine. Just a surprising lack of moths at the moment. Now it's not very often these hang around for very long and this one seems quite settled despite the antenna being raised. But this is a clouded drab. These are much larger and more robust than species like common quaker and especially small quaker. They vary in coloration. The coloration variation is usually in the ground colour to the wings there. The only distinctive mark in many specimens is that sort of cross line near the bottom edge of the wings as we look at it now. But relatively large bodied, quite strong and powerful. And this is a moth that will turn up in many an urban and suburban trap. Well, I might as well take this opportunity to show you this yellow horned, which is posing rather nicely, while it is posing rather nicely. Very variable. I showed you one of these on the recent trapping session I did at Ransom Wood. And Sherwood Forest is certainly the main area in Nottinghamshire for yellow horned, but it is found all over Nottinghamshire. I remember some 10 years ago, I think it is, almost to the very day. Dennis and I are trapped in Sherwood Forest, I think it was in the country park, and we had 66 yellow horns. Our largest ever total, and a cracking total for this species. It's a very attractive moth, sometimes found on fence posts during the day. Found it like that on a couple of occasions, but this one, is posing nicely and say you will get this in suburban traps so always one to look out for if you're running that urban trap or suburban trap during the course of March so that's yellow horned one of three I think we've got in at the moment well, a number of moths coming in as you can see, is increasing now. The majority are Diurnia fagella. But I think by the looks of it, we're up to four yellow horns now. And a number of brindled pug. And we're on 
out of interest we're on 738 so we're up just over 50 minutes in and it's really been since about half past seven when the increase in numbers coming down to the light occurred no other micros apart from Diana Figella I was hoping we might get an early Eclaris of which there's a number of species but doing quite nicely now after a slow start there's in all likelihood there's going to be nothing unusual tonight in this video it's just to show the kind of moths that you can attract in a couple of hours in any area of deciduous woodland and have a nice time doing it at the same time well an hour of the session gone already I don't know where that hour's gone to be honest because for the majority of that hour for three quarters of it it's pretty dead, pretty quiet. But now moths are coming in. And if I just go through the list that I've got here, now we've got two chestnuts, nine Dionia figella, four brindled pug, maybe a couple more actually, five March moth, four yellow horned, two small Quaker, just a single cloud of drab still, two common Quaker have come in, and a pine beauty which is in here, which is going to be the most beautiful moth of the evening. I'm going to take this one home just to get some photographs. So I will put a photograph in about here of Pine Beauty, beautiful spring moth. And the first Oak Beauties have just arrived too, actually, within the same minute. And they're buzzing away off the sheet. So a big improvement and the temperature has gone down to 11 started off at 13 and after an hour is 11 so hopefully it shouldn't go down any more than that but conditions are still the same it's still light cloud I can still see the moon up there although the moon is hazy so we're not doing bad one two three four five six ten species in that hour well 11 possibly one because I've got to identify it because it seems very early but it looks for what I can see to be a grey birch I forgot to to mention that but March middle of March would be early for grey birch in my experience I had one in April but what are flight times nowadays 20-30 years ago flight times given in books probably meant more than what they do now how times have changed and here is that pine beauty there's two forms to pine beauty there's this sort of pale form and then there's the the typical form which is much brighter and more orangey or brownish either form it's absolutely beautiful moth it really is but this is the form that I don't trap so often we may well get the other form in but not a moth that are trapped regularly but obviously there are still pines in this part of Sherwood Forest and you may well get this moth at home too I've had it once I believe at Market Warsaw but it is an absolute beauty of a moth and these lighting conditions of MV light and the flash from the camera don't do this moth justice at all so I'll put in a few photographs because it is a cracking species it's a lovely thing so that's pine beauty and it really is a beauty The power to attract moths by the use of mercury vapour light is renowned and it is the best method 
of attracting moths you can use an ordinary actinic bulb less bright you'll get less moths sometimes you can get different species of moths carpet moths the geometry they often respond better to actinic light than they do mv light but i did mention earlier in this video about if you're new to moth trapping and to start your journey in february or march especially march and that's because the number of species is less considerably less than if you were to try and start trapping in june and july and the newcomer or novice to moth trapping will be completely overwhelmed by the sheer number of moths you'll always get less moths if you trap from home but you can still get really good numbers I remember one particularly good night Dillis and I had over 90 species by the end of a night and that was in the garden and that's excessive and rare from the garden and if you come out into woodland even in the early months of the year you will catch moths but you'll catch less of them and it is easier to keep a check on those moths that come in so my advice would always be to start trapping early but just beware that you will trap less moths at home sometimes frustratingly so this year a lot of people have had completely blank nights and don't bother really trapping if the temperature is going to drop much below 80 degrees centigrade the warmer the better while starting your trapping journey early in the year it gets you prepared to a degree for your first summers of moth tra trapping I did say I wasn't going to show that many moths but one thing that has certainly helped me I think is this channel itself and filming these moth trapping exploits because to show other people the beautiful moths that we do have here in the UK though a lot of them are common when you trap regular you tend to ignore them you just say oh oak beauty such and such such and such and you just total the moths up at the end of the night or as they come in in my instance and over the years you you tend not to look at them too much you're constantly looking through them for that anticipated and hoped for rarity but you do tend to neglect to actually look at the moths that come in and there's another oak beauty that you got a glimpse of and so I've learned to appreciate the commoner moths more those moths such as oak beauty that I've tended to overlook when you've seen them year on year for many years it's nice to be reminded how beautiful these moths are it's a cracking species and so I'm very grateful for doing these videos because I benefit as well and hopefully other people benefit too so easy to neglect those common species that we get at MV light Temperatures now has gone down to 10. We have lost the moon, so the cloud is slowly thickening up, but it's half past eight, so another quarter of an hour, and I'll be quite happy with just two hours this evening. The whole idea of me trapping here was just to come and do a sample trapping session. And that will have been achieved after two hours there's been nothing unusual or rare 
it was coming some species I expected but haven't turned up but it's also obvious now how you can so easily miss the flight periods of some of these early moths like spring ushers are long since finished now pale brindle beauty also seems to have ended ended somewhat quickly to be honest but there again spring usher pale brindle beauty are flying earlier so easy to miss these species Tortricoides altanella is another one that's very quickly done and dusted for another year so if you want to trap some of these early spring species or late winter species you've missed some this is the fourth trapping session I think that I've done this year and it's surprising how easy it is to miss a particular species when it's in flight but of course early in the year hundreds of moths to begin the flight periods over the next few months all to look forward to well we're at quarter to nine two hours up one new species has just come in and that's water carpet species that I'd completely forgotten about but that's the first of a number that we'll see over the next few trapping sessions so only two hours some may say well, is it worthwhile coming out just for two hours well yes it is two hours trapping is better than two hours not trapping in my experience if you want to catch moths it doesn't always have to be a long trapping session it doesn't have to be all night at least not to me it doesn't I'm quite happy with two hours so time to start packing away <laughs> 